All right, children. All right, settle down. We have a very special guest visiting us today. Can you all say hello to Mr. Vaughn? Hello, hello Mr. Mr. Vaughn. Oh, please. Mr. Vaughn was my family's milkman. You can call me Emmett. Evan here is going to read you a book. Your well-bred teacher is correct, children. As the host of Patriot Hour, the most popular conservative talk show on title, it has come to my attention that your generation is actively losing sight of what it means to be an American. Leftists will stop at nothing to pickle your brains with estrogen and microplastics, rendering you a slave to the Democratic Party for the rest of your lives. I don't want you to be indoctrinated, so I wrote a little something to uphold the traditional American values of our forefathers. What? What is what? Exactly? I, no, no, no. I have forefathers! The biggest threat to children in schools is some maniac walking through those doors and pulling out a copy of Anti-Racist Baby. I'm here to keep you safe from so-called doctors writing supposedly good books for America's youth. You know, my wife is a doctor. Are you gonna read the book? Or... Book? Oh, right. My book is called Red Build Riding Hood. Let me guess. Title came first? Always. It begins. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Red Build Riding Hood. She got this name because she rejected the leftist narratives of modern society. One sunny day, Red Build Riding Hood was on her way to her granny's house through the Republican woods. As always, she had her red coat, her best shoes for skipping, a basket of goodies, and her favorite assault rifle. She loved skipping through the Republican woods past the unregulated fracking, the freshly drained swamp, and the field of 2,000 mules. Today was going to be a great day. Suddenly, she noticed a posse of gnomes blocking her path. Why, it was Mr. Antifa, Mr. BLM, Mr. Occupy Wall Street, and Mr. Critical Race Theory, all in her way. Red Pulled Riding Hood knew they were up to no good. Excuse me, I'm trying to get to my granny's house. Too bad, we're setting up story time, drag brunch. Red Pulled Riding Hood couldn't believe her ears. What was happening to the Republican woods? And right on the path to granny's house? Her father hadn't died storming the Capitol for this. Then, suddenly, from out of the crowd emerged a- A big bad wolf! What? No. It's improbable for a wolf of such size or genus to be located in these woods. Not to mention, a wolf would not be the ideal interpretation of a partisan leader whose policies bring America closer to unjust and immoral socialists. This story is boring! Uh-oh, Vaughn, you're losing him. Okay, fine. It was a big bad wolf. He had glasses and smelled like Ben and & Jerry's, and he had those big, stupid mittens. Oh, come on, that's cheap. Good point. Children, for legal reasons, the wolf does not represent any person or persons living or dead. None of this does, by the way. Red Pill Riding Hood was immediately alarmed. Her granny had warned her of dangerous people infiltrating the woods, and she could tell from the wolf's red sweater that he was a socialist. But isn't she wearing red? It's a different red. The wolf is wearing, like, evil red. What's a socialist? A socialist is an evil person who wants communism instead of freedom. You know why FDR was in a wheelchair? Because he was a socialist! But red's my favorite color! You're a commie. Where are you off to? My granny's house. I'm bringing her a basket of goodies. Mmm, <laughs> oh, that smells, that smells good. What is that, key? What is that quiche? It doesn't matter what's in here, because my granny says I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Especially liberal strangers. Yeah, good. Okay. Smart girl. Well, hey, listen, look. It's dangerous out here for a little girl to be in the woods all by herself. Do you know how much money Big Pharma would make if you got hurt out here? Of course I do. I'm going to be a doctor one day. See? Woman doctor. Just like my wife. The wolf followed Red Bull Riding Hood as she walked along. Well, that is, let me tell you, very interesting. I'm sure you'd like some free tuition to help with your medical school. No way. By making secondary education free, I'm more likely to be enrolled in programs that are underfunded and won't prepare me for my desired industry. Well, isn't that? That's great. That's great. Hey, look, who told you all this? My granny. I'm on my way to drop some goodies off at her house. Well, look, here's the thing. I know a sneaky little shortcut. It's right this way. It's way faster. Red Bull Riding Hood was smart, but the wolf spoke in ancient evil socialist tongue, sometimes called Hebrew. She didn't know he was filling her head with lies, so... Red thanked the wolf and skipped off down the other path. Meanwhile, the wolf slinked off into the woods and towards Granny's house. The wolf arrived at Granny's house before Red and knocked on the door. Whap, whap, whap. I'm coming. 
Oh, Red, it's so nice to see you. But of course, it wasn't Red. It was the wolf! Wait, I'm not Paul Pelosi. No, you're that little girl's grandmother. I'm gonna eat you, I'm gonna eat her, and then I'm gonna take all those tasty snacks and redistribute them. Do you children know anything about the redistribution of wealth and the advantages of a free market? Georgism, laissez-faire, Friedrich Hayek? Do you teach them anything? Yes. Anyways, before Granny could stand her ground, the wolf gobbled her up. Oh no, Granny tasted good, but the wolf was still hungry. Since gender was just a construct to him, he quickly slipped into Granny's nightgown, jumped in the bed, and pulled the covers up to his eyes. Mr. Vaughn, recess is in two minutes. Are we gonna get to play? This is more important. When Red arrived at Granny's, she knocked on the door, whap, whap, whap. Come in, called the wolf in a sing-song voice. I'm not doing the voice. Just imagine it. Aww. Okay, fine. Come in! Red walked in the house, but immediately knew something was wrong. Granny always told her to wipe her feet on the doormat of Obama's face, but she didn't say anything. Granny always left Hannity on in the background, but the TV wasn't on. Granny always sat beside the fireplace reading Atlas Shrugged, but she was in bed. Over here! Red went to the bed, but something was not right. Granny, my, what big ears you have. Oh, the better to listen to NPR with. My, what big eyes you have. Oh, the better to watch John Oliver with. My, what large hands you have. Oh, the better to drive my stupid electric car with. Red Bill Riding could lean closer. Her granny's answers were all alarmingly liberal, and the thing in bed didn't look like her granny. It looked like the wolf. My, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat you with. Red Pill Riding could reach for her assault rifle, but it was too late. The wolf jumped out of bed and gobbled her up. I'd love a drink or something to wash this down. Oh, what do you know? <coughs> oh, oh, I do not like the 1%. When the wolf had appeased his appetite, he fell back down to the bed and turned on the TV to watch a satanic little Nas X video. It was just then that a passing woodsman heard the sounds coming from the cottage. Granny never listens to the Lil Nas X. Rap ain't even music. The woodsman burst through the door to see the wolf lying in bed dressed in blasphemous drag. I don't think he looked so bad. Don't interrupt. I'm going to lose my place. The woodsman lifted his axe, but the wolf was cunning. Wait, you're a hardworking man. Have you ever thought about unionization? The power lies with the people, not corporations. Join me, and we can take on Big Lumber together. Once again, the wolf's socialist lies worked. The poor woodsman put down his axe and took a copy of The Jungle the wolf gave him. I left Betty Frieden at home. Wh who is this even written for? Why would a wolf eat a human? It's a fact that wolves eat humans. I don't feel like that's realistic. Well, facts don't care about your... This phrase is trademarked. It was then, and just then, that the cabin began to shake. The wolf and the woodsman looked up to see four men crash through the cottage ceiling. It was Newt Gingrich, Rush Limbaugh, John Wayne, and the Redeemer himself, Ronald Reagan! Red Rushmore, attack! Quickly, set that woodsman straight! Gingrich and Limbaugh fed the woodsman some freshly hunted venison, while Wayne shook the woodsman's hand firmly with solid eye contact, restoring his manliness instantly. And that'll be enough of that. More like sucked in St. Clair. From now on, it'll be on Rand and Rand Paul. Prepare to get Mondaled, loser. Wait, they're still in my stomach, and they're alive. Ah, so you're saying that life does begin in the womb. What? No, I'm, I'm saying it should be my choice what you do to them. Okay, this metaphor doesn't even make sense. Reagan held out his hand and zapped the wolf with his Star Wars Red Wave laser powers. Pew, 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 pew! The wolf blew up into 11 billion pieces, but Red and Granny were completely fine. You girls should be safe now. Be careful. Those socialists can come from anywhere, and they'll do anything to make you believe their crazy lies. Kind of like you're doing right now. What? No, this is completely different. You're trying to do the same thing. Okay, let's just say, hypothetically, for the sake of the argument, I was. With that, that was the worst story ever. Don't say that. 
Yeah, it was poopy. No, it was not poopy. <laughs> no, no, stop laughing. Stop it. Stop. Stop laughing. I see you laughing. Stop it. Please, stop. Stop laughing. No. Oh, oh, thank God. It was it was just a bad dream. Go back to bed, dear. Oh, of course. I'm sorry, love. Ah, you're wearing that clone I like. Prime rib. Ha ha ha.